Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. We are back looking at a potential high-speed rail route between Atlanta, Georgia and Charlotte, North Carolina. In the last video on this subject, we looked at the route I liked. If you haven't seen that, check it out. Now we'll look at the preferred alternative from the Tier 1 Environmental Impact Statement. This is the so-called Greenfield Alternative. The Atlanta Metro is home to 6.2 million people, making it the 8th largest metro in the United States. It is poised to move past Philadelphia and Washington DC into the number 6 spot within a few years. Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport is the busiest airport in the country. The Atlanta area also has MARTA, which is comprised of heavy rail, light rail, and a bus system. The Charlotte Metro has a population of 2.8 million and is the largest metro in North Carolina. Charlotte is home to Charlotte Douglas International Airport, which is the 10th busiest airport in the country. Charlotte's mass transit system is known as CATS. It includes a bus service, a streetcar line, and an expanding light rail system. Their combined population of 9 million is the largest of any major metro pair in the southeast U.S. and among the fastest growing in the country. This proposed greenfield route is mostly new cut right away roughly 10 to 15 miles south of the Interstate 85 corridor with a quick jog to hook up with Greenville Spartanburg International Airport in South Carolina. This will cut through thousands of properties and require a lot of eminent domain use and litigation. Now is the perfect time to bring up our high-speed rail guiding principles adapted specifically for this route. What's changed? The route we're starting with contradicts most of these and we're not expressly avoiding viaducts and tunnels because we'll almost surely need them in the Atlanta area. That is because this plan would like to enter Atlanta from the east on existing rail rights of way once it gets to the Suwannee area about 30 miles from downtown Atlanta. That is not the easiest ask. We're starting at Charlotte Gateway Station on the northwest side of downtown Charlotte. The description in the environmental impact statement is that the high-speed rail train will follow the Norfolk Southern right of way west to Charlotte Douglas International and across the Catawba River. The EIS has a potential station at Charlotte Douglas International. There are potential conflicts with runway 18 left, which is only 700 feet from the tracks. My route avoided that by pushing the tracks and station 1500 feet to the north. There are several 60 mile per hour curves in this area and in service speed would likely average 60 miles per hour for the eight miles between downtown and the river. At this point, the two routes diverge dramatically. The preferred Greenfield alternative heads west-southwest toward the Greenville-Spartanburg metro area in South Carolina. The route I like heads south toward Columbia, South Carolina. So let's call this the Southern route. Once across the Catawba, the preferred route plows through suburbia for about five miles before reaching more open country, although it continues to interface with suburban residential for about 11 miles until it reaches the border with South Carolina. A station is proposed here seven miles south of Gastonia, North Carolina at the junction with US 321. Who knows? The official map continues southwest, but I diverged from that to the west for a bit to save on demolition and also because I couldn't figure out how a station would work here otherwise without plowing through dozens of homes. Those possibilities converge near Bethany, South Carolina. The route would be able to travel in a straight line for about 27 miles, averaging 200 miles per hour here until reaching Pacolette, South Carolina. Earthworks would handle most grade concerns with a few miles of viaduct necessary to bridge the larger canyons and valleys. The route would slow to 125 miles per hour to curve around Pacolette. 10 miles west, the route slows again to 90 miles per hour heading northwest through mixed suburban rural territory to Greenville Spartanburg International Airport. The EIS puts the station near the airport. I went ahead and put it at the airport. Greenville Spartanburg is a small international airport. 
Putting a station here by adding 20 miles of track feels like a compromise decision to attempt to serve the entire Greenville-Spartanburg area, which has a population of 1.5 million in roughly the same space as the Atlanta Metro. The station would be 13 miles from central Greenville and 18 miles from central Spartanburg. On the upside, there is about a square mile of vacant land here, which has the potential to be transformed into a third metro core, assuming residents were okay with being wedged between an airport, a freeway, and a giant BMW plant. Heading back south to the main part of the corridor, the train would quickly pick up speed, entering a large radius curve, cruising at 175 to 200 miles per hour, for about 10 miles before crossing Interstate 385 and slowing to navigate some tighter curves for about 10 miles. Things get back up to speed for about 20 miles, roughly paralleling a utility corridor before reaching Anderson, South Carolina. This area is marked for a potential station. I'm not seeing it, but okay. Continuing to the west-southwest from there at 200 miles per hour for another 35 miles and crossing over into Georgia, just south of Lake Hartwell in the process. At Danielsville, Georgia, the route dips into a series of 110 mile per hour curves to the southwest in order to intercept Athens, Georgia. Seven miles east of Athens, the route jumps into the CSX right-of-way and stays on that until about eight miles out of town through the northwest. Cruising speed in the Athens area would be between 60 and 110 miles per hour. This area is marked for a potential station, presumably close to the University of Georgia, which is about half a mile from the tracks near downtown. West of Athens, the route breaks into open country and new right-of-way at a village marked Attica on Google Maps. The right-of-way would weave its way through more mixed suburban rural, averaging about 150 miles per hour for nearly 20 miles before hooking up with Interstate 85 a few miles west of Brazelton, Georgia. The route parallels Interstate 85 for 10 miles, cruising at 110 miles per hour briefly before slowing dramatically for a two-mile jaunt to the northwest in order to hook up with Norfolk Southern right away into Atlanta. This would plow through an upscale suburban neighborhood for three quarters of a mile unless it was really slow. Once in the Norfolk Southern right away, the train would mostly travel at 60 to 90 miles per hour as a through train. They have this transition area at Suwanee marked as a spot for a potential station there's room there if you're willing to take out seven or eight single family homes. There are plenty of question marks in this portion of the route. There is room for two dedicated tracks in or next to the right of way for 15 miles until Doraville when Marta joins the right of way and it becomes quite full about 12 miles northeast of downtown Atlanta. At that point, I opted to go underground for two and a half miles until there is once again room on the surface, at least for Viaduct. Doraville is the future site of a large movie studio called Assembly Studios and potentially an important proposed station. Since I already have the tracks underground, why not put the station under the Marta Doraville station and link the two? After coming out of the ground, the tracks would need to immediately rise 80 or 90 feet to get over this pretzel. Parts here only have room for viaduct and the track would need to stay elevated for several miles before coming back down to ground level. This continues through a wild intersection of a state route freeway, two MARTA lines, and the Norfolk Southern right-of-way. There is room, but this apartment complex might lose a couple of structures. There is a very tight squeeze around this sizable apartment building. Options exist to keep that in place as removal sounds expensive. The tracks would need to go up and over this Amtrak station. They would then cross Interstate 75 about 80 feet up. The right of way coming into downtown Atlantic gets very tight and likely several structures will need to be demolished to make room. This potentially includes structures at the former Southern Railway North Avenue yards. Downtown, I chose to go underground because every other option is complicated to impossible. 
According to the EIS, a station is planned downtown in the middle of the large Centennial Yards development. I'm just going straight under the right of way for simplicity's sake, assuming a joint station with MARTA at GWCC CNN Center. Once underground, options open up to do otherwise if necessary. After emerging from the ground a half mile later, the track would go up on viaduct for the rest of the way. This is because the right-of-way is pretty full from CSX and MARTA. In some parts, there is just barely room for viaduct columns. That would get the train to Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport domestic terminal along with MARTA and the airport SkyTrain. If this takes the same route as MARTA ends up at the same place and takes roughly the same amount of time, what's the point of extending the high-speed rail line to the airport? In the route analysis, routes got points for connecting to airports. Didn't matter how or if it made sense though. For that matter, why go farther than Doraville when this route initially hooks up with MARTA? On the route I like, I connected to this airport from the east first and then into downtown, which I left as an option for the audience to discuss. In addition, my route between downtown and the airport was different from MARTA's and a little faster as well. For cost, I came up with a number using my simple cost estimation method and it was very different from the estimate in the EIS. Estimation methods in these reports are more sophisticated than mine, so I got to wondering about regional variation in land acquisition and construction costs. My cost estimates are partially based on estimates for Brightline West, which is being constructed mostly in California. I found a study by the Midwest Economic Policy Institute concerning comparison of highway construction costs between states that very conveniently provides data for every state over a broad time period. Differences between the states can be profound. Average land acquisition cost in the most expensive state is 67 times that of the least expensive, for instance. When accounting for this information, my estimate ends up much closer to the one in the EIS. This is a revelation for my cost estimation system, but it also means I need to rework nearly every cost estimation I've given to date. But let's start with this Greenfield route. I have the cost of this 279 mile route from downtown Charlotte to Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport at $14.3 billion. Compare this to the upper range estimate of $8.4 billion in the 2021 report for an electrified high-speed rail route. That's a steal compared to what it would cost in California or New England. This may be part of our issue with high-speed rail nationally. We're only building it in the places where it's most expensive to build and then assuming that will carry over to states where land and construction are much cheaper. So what do we get for 14.3 billion? Let's look at some express travel times. Downtown Atlanta to downtown Charlotte, 269 miles, two hours, one minute, average of 134 miles per hour. Atlanta to Greenville, Spartanburg, 190 miles, one hour, 19 minutes, an average of 137 miles per hour. Greenville, Spartanburg to Charlotte, 89 miles, 43 minutes, an average of 126 miles per hour, end to end 279 miles, 2 hours 8 minutes for an average of 132 miles per hour. The estimate in the EIS is 2 hours 6 minutes. Interestingly, they predicted a 125 mile per hour diesel electric time of 2 hours 42 minutes at about 3 quarters the cost. How does it compare to the route I like? First, let's address the population issue. This EIS route would also service Athens, Georgia with a metro population of about 215,000. I stated the difference in population of the two routes as half a million in favor of the southern route. It's more like 200,000 if you consider the additional stations on the Greenfield alternative. Charlotte to Atlanta travel times are comparable at two hours. The southern route is much faster, but also has farther to go. The southern route does provide much better travel times for its intermediate destinations of Augusta, Georgia and Columbia, South Carolina. 
The Greenfield alternative would require demolition of 270 or more structures and acquisition of thousands of parcels of land. The Southern route would mostly be an interstate highway right-of-way with almost no land acquisition and less than 50 structures demolished. The Greenfield alternative is slightly cheaper and it offers a connection to the University of Georgia. However, the Southern route connects to the University of South Carolina and also two large army bases. What do you think of these routes? If you have any opinions about this video or just high speed rail in general, please leave them in the comments. With this revelation about regional construction differences, I have some corrections to make. I'm going to put a quick video together adjusting all my previous cost estimates with this new variable. I'd like to get that done in a few days. I think I'll leave the previous videos up with a card to the new video and a pinned comment. I may edit those and re-upload. I haven't decided yet. What's your opinion on the matter? It was a challenge looking at this Atlanta Charlotte Greenfield route that someone else created. It certainly gave me new perspectives that I'll be able to apply to future videos. Up next is Stu's news on the last Friday of the month. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.